Hi, thanks for joining me today. I just want to take a couple of minutes of your time. I want to share some scripture with you. Some scripture that is describing the greatest expression of love that this world has ever seen or will ever see. Yeah, I'm talking specifically about the crucifixion of Christ. Jesus giving his life for us. Yeah, listen to these words. And uh, you'll very quickly be replaying some of the images in your mind of what was happening to Jesus. Dogs have surrounded me. A band of evil men have encircled me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all of my bones. People stare and gloat over me. Yeah, a Roman crucifixion, it was obviously there for the purpose of execution, but it was also there for the sake of creating as much suffering as possible and for humiliating an individual. It was done in a very public fashion. And we see some of that reflected in those words. Here's some more words. They divide my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. Yeah, immediately the image that comes to your mind are the Roman soldiers that were casting lots for Jesus' clothing. Because again, he was being exposed to everybody, part of the humilia humiliation. There was no need for him to have that clothing. And so, so they were casting lots for it. Listen to these words. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him since he delights in him. Mockery. Yeah, people were in the crowd. They were shouting and they were mocking. They were ridiculing him. Kind of makes your heart hurt, doesn't it? To envision all of that and to be reminded of what it was Jesus went through on your behalf. Listen to these words. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from the words of my groaning? Yeah, a cry of anguish. This was serious stuff, obviously. But Jesus was doing it all for us. He didn't have to be there. And he certainly was capable of, of avoiding you know, the arrest and the crucifixion. But he knew for your sake and he knew for my sake that that was exactly where he needed to be. And he experienced the anguish of it all. One more. I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax and it has melted away within me. My strength is dried up like a pot sheared and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. You know, Jesus hung on the cross a few hours. And during that time bleeding, during that time becoming extremely parched and eventually dying. Yeah, the crucifixion of Christ, like I said, it is the greatest expression of love that this world has ever or will ever see. But here's the thing that I want to point out to you. All of those words that I just read for you, I did not go into the Gospels. I did not go to Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, the first four books of the New Testament, the Gospel accounts. I didn't go there to pull any of those words out. As a matter of fact, I didn't even go to the New Testament. What I just read for you were all words that are found in one particular chapter of the Old Testament. Psalm 22. Yeah. Yeah, for people who, who kind of have the, the thinking, and I've heard this expression once in a while, I'm not an Old Testament person, I'm a New Testament person. You know, that's unfortunate. Because there's some stuff in the Old Testament that uh, has incredible value. Psalm 22 is one of those. It's jam-packed with messianic prophecy, specifically pertaining to his crucifixion. And here's the kicker in all of this. It was written 1,000 years 
before Jesus was ever crucified. Ten full centuries of time before it actually came to pass. Hey, you know, that, that to me helps testify to the inspiration of Scripture. Because who would have known the future that clearly in that much detail a thousand years in advance other than God? And he's the one that inspired the writing of that through David. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really an incredible chapter. And do yourself a favor. Spend some time on it. Read through Psalm 22. It ends with this little expression right at the very end of verse 31. It says, he has done it. The interesting thing about that, that in the Hebrew, that is one word. It could, be, it, it could be translated, and usually is translated, one of two ways. He has done it. That's one way. The other way is it is done. But it's just one word. It kind of reminds me of a verse in the gospel. John chapter 19, verse 30. Right when Jesus was about to breathe his last, in a loud voice, he said, It is finished. And when you look closely at that, in the original language, you see that that's just one word. It's the word tetelestai. It is finished. It wasn't a cry of suffering. It wasn't a cry of defeat. Just like Psalm 22, verse 31, that's not a cry of suffering either. That's a cry of deliverance and, and, and uh, um, freedom and, and victory that the psalmist was writing. And so it is in John chapter 19, verse 30. Jesus wasn't saying, oh, I'm done. It's over. It's finished. I'm defeated. No, he wasn't saying that. He was saying mission accomplished. He came and did what he knew you needed him to do and what I needed him to do. He sealed the victory. Yeah, go back to the Old Testament. Read Psalms. Particularly today, read Psalm 22, and you will see some very clear images of your Savior and the greatest expression of love that has ever been seen when he died for you and for me. Have a good week. I'll see you soon.